Bootleg Podcasts, made for everyone, by anyone. You are listening to The Rating is Right, a game show podcast based around the movies you love and their ratings. Think The Price is Right with a lower budget, less Bruce and no prizes. Introducing your host, Ian Crow. It's the rating. It's the rating. Rating, rating. It's the rating. It's the rating. Hello and welcome to a very special and 10th episode of The Rating Is Right. So before I introduce my co-hosts, let's explain how this is going to work. Quite simply, my co-hosts will be guessing the ratings of a series of films, including whether they are higher or lower than the previous one. They'll be guessing one point for a correct guess of higher or lower, an additional point for whoever is closest and a whopping three points for anyone lucky enough to guess the rating bang on. The winner at the end of the episode will have the honour and privilege of giving a recommendation of a film that takes their fancy, and also if you remember to do that. Uh, now that's all sorted, let's meet my co-hosts. So he's the current champion, uh, and my favourite ginger person, I probably said that already before, but it's George Robinson. I don't think you've ever said that. Have I never said that? Person. Oh, no. wait, but it's, it's now it's now in podcast I, history, I can, I can it's now... Cherished. On the episode, so you are my favourite ginger person. Can we just remind everybody what the current winning streak is? The current winning streak, oh, oh, well, I will, it's, it's quite a fair bit, I will just say that, but I believe that you are currently on a six winning streak, or is it a five? I mean, I'm happy to say six. No, 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 it's, it's not. It's four. <laughs> <laughs> it's four. You're on a four, okay. you're on a four yeah. game winning streak, so yeah. you've got a massive opportunity to make it five today. Also, I prefer Isla Fisher to George. <laughs> I'm Jessica Chastain. Yep. Uh, Ray Parler. Ray Parler. Yeah. Uh, John Alarita. We could just keep going, actually. Yeah. Maybe you're, you've gone down a little bit, but I'll keep yeah. it just for this, this episode. It's, it's, a it's a special one. It's a special one. Am I the favourite ginger sat around the room? Um, uh, well, Zuki is an artificial ginger, but I consider that to be part of the. I, I would <laughs> say so. But yeah, but George, you are my favourite. I'll just keep it that way. Okay. Um, authentic ginger. Yes. Authentic ginger, yes. Um, my second co host, as always, is the beautiful, wonderful Owen Cox. Welcome back again. How, Hello. Are you, how, how are you feeling? As, have you just been reminded four games in a row that you've lost? Is today the day you can break? It's not about the winning for me. <laughs> it's like, not about the winning at all. No, I don't, I'm not in it for the glory. I'm in it just to say things and do stuff. Are you here just to enjoy yourself, basically? Yeah. Right, okay. I'm, just here, I'm just here for a good time. Okay. George's <laughs> shallow victories mean everything to him, but... <laughs> <laughs> he's got to have something in life, hasn't he? It's the only thing he's got nothing else going for him. He's, well, he's got, like, he's my favourite ginger person. That's, yeah. that's something. But as you probably have heard, and I did say at the start, this is our 10th, but a very special episode. This is the first time that we have a guest on the podcast. As is our 10th episode, we've always said that we want a special guest on the episode. Uh, so on the podcast today is the probably the best uh, book reviewer and the best book collection out there, it's Suki Edgar. Thank you very much. Yes, I will I will take that um title, best best book reviewer around. Also, I'm coming on to this episode one time and I'm hoping to to topple George off of his throne. Oh. Um, but I don't have much faith in myself, I will be honest. We have already said that if you win, it doesn't count. Oh, I mean, that is so not fair. George, George has said that. I but... feel like you need a full um, leaderboard. I'm thinking very but old Top Gear-esque where they did the, oh, the oh, things yeah, and they yeah. started oh, the magnets on. The, the lap, yeah, so... yeah. What about if the margin of victory is bigger than any margin of victory we've had previously? Oh, I tell you what, though, that's, that'll be that's really like, impressive yeah, double, because double win. George, yeah. George has got a really impressive uh, like a major yeah. win in one of the... Was that the uh, previous last, episode? Fast it was Furious, a, a I think. Few, oh, yeah, yeah I've seen 80% of the films. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> don't make the rules. Unless people probably already don't know if you haven't listened to the other episodes, I think Owen has made it very clear that Zuki is Owen's uh, girlfriend um, and me and George have already said before we recorded a podcast today that Owen's losing so badly he's having to get his girlfriend to come on and, <laughs> yeah. and, and defend him on the Bail podcast him out. Yeah, she's uh, got fight Owen is so <laughs> desperate he's like let me just get my girlfriend who knows more about Phil and about me anyway um, <laughs> so normally what we do is a, a genre or like a, a franchise of movies and we talk about those but Owen, Owen has a question he's put his hand up Zuki yes, is also Cops. the voice of the intro and the outro yeah, yeah. that's no, true yeah. Yeah. I, yes you may recognise me <laughs> yeah you may recognise her she's the, the voice of the start of the podcast but now as, we, as we've got Zuki on I thought we'll, I'd make things maybe a little bit different a lot of people are trying to guess what kind of films we're going to cover 
Uh, because hor- uh, horror is a massive genre that you like, Zuki, it isn't sure it? It sure is. Um, so I thought I'll be a little bit weird and do some stalking on uh, Zuki's letterbox account. Oh, no. Uh, so I have gone with a list of eight <laughs> movies of Zuki's five star rated oh, movies oh, to see how much Zuki <laughs> knows about the movies, but also whether we may judge her rating system by giving this is so these, mean. these movies a near, well, a, 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 a perfect rating of That's five brilliant. stars. Um, so what are, you, what are your initial <laughs> reaction on that, boys? I think his toes are literally curling. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear that curl? It's something, that, that, microphone. something that Owen has never been able to make happen. <laughs> <laughs> George's, George's microphone is so good, we can literally hear the curl. <laughs> the creaking <laughs> of the microphone. The creaking of it. Um, so normally we're, we're going to change things up a little bit. We Last, or every single episode before, we've had the, the current champion will go first, but we are changing due to some feedback we've had from people. So we're just going to go... People are sick of my voice. People are, we are just <laughs> sick of give Jules speaking to for like 85% speak. of the podcast and Owen going, yeah, basically what Jules said. <laughs> and then moving on really quickly. Can so, I, um, as these are my five-star films that we're doing, can yes. I do um, like just a mini-review for each one? Yeah. So you yeah. call them out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a couple of sentences. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Zuki, yeah. if you had listened to the podcast previously, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's exactly how the, <laughs> the podcast Z- goes. Zuki's been on the podcast more than she's listened to it, which is <laughs> absolutely impressive. This is not true. Yeah. I've listened to the first two episodes. <laughs> so we're going to start, um, obviously we're doing eight movies of Zuki's five-star rated Such movies on Letterboxd. Uh, really? We're going to start with Owen, um, and then we're going to go Zuki, and then George. That's the kind of pattern we're going to go, no matter what the score is. So, Owen, we're going to go first. So, with the first film, at this point, we haven't kind of got a number to go high or lower by, so I just want you to guess a number, um, kind of 0 to 100. Uh, so, the first movie on the list is a personal favourite of mine, and also a five-star rated movie, American Psycho. Oh, yeah. Um, is so, it a horror or is it a psychological thriller? I, I wouldn't say it's a psychological you know, thriller. We're not doing horrors. We're doing, yeah, no, we're doing oh, sorry, Zuki's personal <laughs> favourite film. It's five oh. star movies, but that could mean that all of them could be horrors because oh. Zuki does not horror, but I have made sure that they're the, it's not all oh, it's, it's not really all horror so that's a good opportunity then for me to get a win because I've probably seen all I of them. really wish I probably have, yeah. that George was first because I feel like his ratings clearly are better and he, I trust him more so I, I really wish that you were going first so I could like gauge well that's not the rules this week <laughs> to be fair I put myself in a really good position of being last yeah. in the guessing order that <sighs> it just means I can George is very oh. good at manipulating the game to make it work for him oh, hopefully today that won't be the case because Owen's actually watching the movie so First of all, American um, Psycho, before um, before you give me a rating, what are your thoughts on American Psycho? Oh, I love American Psycho. It's great. I like all Christian Bale films. I can't think of a Christian Bale film I don't like. Pocahontas. I've not seen it. You haven't seen House Moving Castle, and that's another five stars. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah House Moving Castle. Sorry, mate. Wait. Anyway, so. I want about more about Christian Paul. Bale's in Pocahontas? Yeah. Is he John Smith? Yeah. When, when did wait, this no, wait, who's, main, who's John Smith? Is that the, main no, guy? the main guy. That That's Mel Gibson. Gibson. That's Mel Gibson, yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, I'm pretty sure Christian Bale's in Pocahontas. Well, I've not seen this as well. <laughs> it's a massive fuck-up yeah. straight away from me. How's <laughs> 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 Moving Castle is 100% correct, that. though. Yeah, he's definitely in that. So, go on. What's the oh, new Miyazaki film called? First off subject. How's Moving Castle? No, the new one that he's just... Oh, really... I do not know the name of it. Oh, okay. But, yeah, American Psycho. It's had such a resurgence as well. I feel like when it came out, it wasn't appreciated. So that's going to reflect on my score because critically, when it came out, I know it wasn't received well. I think Am I bo- right in saying that? I think box Not well, that you can't ask me. <laughs> you can't ask me. Yeah. But, yeah, I'm but, certainly trying to pry information out. But I will say that American Psycho, box office wise, wasn't um, it wasn't incredible. It's a female director, right? It's yeah, Mar- Mary Heron. Was yeah, the director. and it was originally supposed to be Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio Pat- was Patrick yeah, Patrick yeah, DiCaprio was. Offered the role, was really close to taking it, but was basically told it'd be career suicide. Which is exactly what happened with Christian Bale. Where exactly what happened with Christian Bale? I'm doing it. But five years later, he's uh, he was Batman, and his career went on the upturn. That's so good. Although that's not to say that it's like one of those sliding door moments for the Leo, because Leo's just continue to do well. What was he doing at the time? What was his alternative? What Leo? Well, Leo was kind of doing stuff like the beach before that. Yeah, yeah. So the beach would have been the same year, and before that, he'd just done Romeo and Juliet and Titanic, where he was the heartthrob for all the teenage girls and the women. So to go from psychopathic, yeah, misogynist, a very, very like, yeah, it could have been Paul Allen. Works for some people. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) he would have worked well as Paul Allen because they had what's his name in instead, didn't they? 
But then I think DiCaprio would have been too kind of like um, too well known, too well known to have been like a side character, too handsome. Christian Bale's yeah. got like a demeanor, hasn't he? DiCaprio's not really a co-star, is he? He uh, he's the star really a lot of the time. I can't really know many movies where he's a co-star. Uh, Django and Jane. Yeah, Django. Django. Yeah. Is he the whole thing? But he's the yeah, main the antagonist in that film. He's the main antagonist. So he's a yeah. co-star, but he's the main like yeah. well antagonist. What I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I won't say too much more other than I really like American Psycho because obviously there's two more people that are going to speak about it, so I don't want to just blow. I do. I, 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 I'm going to interject. <laughs> We've yeah. literally changed the game. So yeah, but you can talk more about a give. movie, and the chance that Owen has to talk about movies goes. Not to say too much. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm going to pass on to the other people to say a lot more. I'd rather give Zuki more to say because it's her one and only episode. So right. I'll tell one you and what. only. I don't get an invite back. Well, well, we're only doing a special guest every 10. You well, could do my it, like, it, depends, it depends how many followers we get from you, Zuki, if you actually <laughs> listen to the podcast. But what I will say to you before we go to Zuki, do you agree with Zuki that it's a five-star movie? Yeah, I've got it as a five-star. You've when I used to review films, <laughs> when <laughs> I review films, the, the, the guy on the podcast, the film podcast doesn't make movies anymore. Yeah, I just want to put that out there to everyone. Yep. Yeah. And okay. everyone always says, but you're on a f- podcast that rates films, but we don't rate films. We guess the ratings of others. Yeah. So no, there you go. Point. I'm not saying, I'm not answering that question one more time. Yeah, we're, Stop we're fucking better than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm we're judging their ratings of the movies, yeah. 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 And I'm, mine, apparently. Yeah, yeah, and you, yeah, yeah. Well, Zuki, this is your, your first time to to talk about. He's got to give a guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. We literally, we literally just so talked about how the podcast works. And we forgot. And do you know what? I don't feel guilty about this episode potentially going on to 90 minutes because there's three of us giving answers. So naturally, it's probably going to be longer. Right, I'm going to go in reasonably <laughs> low, but not super low. I'm going to go 71. 71. Oh, okay, that's not so that's personal, low. though. I believe that when it came out critically, it wasn't received well. It's... Be- it's garnered a cult following since, I would say. Right. Okay. So, 71. 71. Okie dokie. Yep. Okay, that's interesting, because I was going to give it something similar. Um, well, that's okay. You can, still, you can still do that if you want. You can say 70 if you want. We do it all the time. Yeah. No, I know you do. That will no, be, that do. soon it will be banned, though, I will say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, America Saga is one of my five-star films. I just think... And the book. Uh, yeah, this is the thing. And, I mean, maybe I shouldn't actually admit that publicly you have to, to people. You have for it. That... <laughs> Now listen, because Brett Easton Ellis is notoriously not a very nice guy, but America's Like of the Book is brilliant, and the film is brilliant in a different way. And yes, I do have a tattoo that has a little coat hanger because of the book. So I am a big fan of American Psycho. Okay. What's, the, what's a coat hanger got to do with it? He hangs um, them up in the wardrobe, doesn't he? No, it's not that. In the book, he says, the things I can do to you with a coat hanger, honey. Ah, is what he says okay, to all what, what a lovely um, thing to have tattooed on your body. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. That might not be the exact <laughs> phrase. There's a petition. Do not get Zuki back on the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Masochist. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I was going to go, I was going to rate very closely to Owen. What did you say, 71? So 71, yeah. And that's not percent. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, Established no. that very early. It's not yeah, percentage, that. yeah. I got that. Okay. I am going to go... I'm going to go slightly higher. I mentioned he was very, he sounded very sure that it wasn't well received when it came out. I have absolutely no clue about how well films were received when they came out. Yeah, okay. Um, So I'm really just going off, well, my personal rating would be 100, clearly. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go 76. You're going to go 76, yeah. okay. Right. Well, for context, the highest score we've had so far has been, what, 98? Yeah, 98. Yeah, but I imagine yeah. between like 80, like 80 numbers... It's very packed in tight for like good films. Yeah. I reckon it's like there's tons of them. So, I'm going seventy six. Okay, you're going seventy six. Okay, right. We'll go on to George then. Who's got the last? Is last it, one to guess. This is like the first time in forever that I have gone second with my guess. You always come first. Yeah, I always come first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <a selfish. laughs> um, I I think it's great, but I do agree with Owen that I I don't think it would have been received as highly as people kind of view it now. It is, I think it's definitely got the status of a cult movie. Oh, definitely. Because it's say not so that would have necessarily been either well received or uh, like did well, but kind of money wise, like box office wise. But over time, it's now really popular. Yeah. But box office and what we're talking about, Metacritic, it's the critics' rating, and I feel like yeah. potentially it is a bit of a critics' wet dream a little bit 
I but don't do know. I, I, I think about the time though that it came out. But the, yeah, I agree with you. But I feel like it made quite a statement, and I feel like potentially, I mean, that could go either way, obviously. Mm. But I think potentially because it was female directed, and she sort of took a spin on Patrick Bateman from how he was in the book into the movie that critics would be aware of that potentially I'm going they might have gone wow this is this is something new something different or the critics at or the they time went were... this is pants yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you change oh this my god material. can I say going on the previous nine episodes you are drastically overestimating critics <laughs> <laughs> I mean Owen yeah. if you don't know loves the critics That's he awesome. respects them so much I mean I agree with them half the time yeah um, you've, you've watched American Psycho, right? Oh, so you, oh I love it. I you love it, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, five star all round. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, and I, I think there's not many films that were, that, that did well with critics that then gained a cult status later on. Right. I think yeah. it's normally the, the films that don't do so well that then get a resurgence. Yeah. Um, because if you've had your time in the spotlight, you don't need it again. I sort of feel though with... American Psycho, the reason it's become a bit more of a cult following film is because people feel like some sort of weird connection with Patrick Bateman as a it's character like a rather than the, it? the it's, film. Yeah, it's yeah. like this whole... For the wrong reasons. Yeah, this yeah. whole, like, what, what you just said. Did you say Sigma male? That's the whole thing, isn't it? It's the Sigma <laughs> male movement. Would Patrick seen... Bateman be a Sigma male? Well, I don't think, personally, I don't understand why people have attributed that <laughs> title to him because he's absolutely not. He's a complete <laughs> conformist. <laughs> just wants to, like, the whole point, literally yeah, the whole point. Yeah, people yeah. have missed the point of the film. I yeah. believe it's because it's all 14, 15 year olds who still live at home who've never uh, a wage. <laughs> 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 <They're> like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this whole <laughs> sigma is <laughs> bleeding through. <laughs> <laughs> this whole sigma mindset is people who just haven't lived in the real world yet. I think. Let's not get on Sigma line. But yeah, <laughs> it's completely out of context. It never would have happened at the time, but I personally think it should have been Oscar nominated for. American Psycho for I mean, the scene alone. alone. For his body alone. The scene alone he, at the end when he's on the phone to his lawyer. Is it his lawyer? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I've killed a lot of people. It, it's, just, it's like a massive mind bubble for like two, three minutes. Yeah. And mm. I just think, every time I watch that. Uh, should we watch it tonight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's no, watch well, let's all just the Zuki's five star right movies. Now, but... Yeah. Okay. So, George, you have watched it. You, yes. It's great. So, you agree with Zuki as a five star? I agree. It's really good. I'm so gonna, do I. I would rate it really highly, but I'm going to say that the, the meta score rating is. Lower than both of these guys. I'm going to say it's 65. So you're going with 65. So it oh, 71. Zuki is 76. Uh, George was seven, uh, 65. Uh, Zuki is the closest. Oh, no, sorry. I'm oh, lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Oh. I'm lying. George is the closest. Yes! Oh. He's one off. Uh, it's on oh. 64. 64. 64. Uh, sorry, I, did, I think I said 74, but not 64. That was um, so, yeah, George, yeah. you take uh, the two <laughs> points. I get two zero zero. No, we get a point. No, you get that. We, for you what? Get, no, for at what? the start, it's the everybody gets a point. You always say this. <laughs> no, he don't. Lose. He said he said he did say it once, but the last episode we clarified. Yeah, yeah. You get it. You get zero. If you oh, want what? to, we've changed the rules. If you want to, you can reinstate that. I just get one. All right, let's do that then. Well, fine. Well, I'll just start one. So <laughs> oh, I don't get a stupid got... lead. I can just have one. You get you get a one stupid oh. lead. Have we changed the scoring? Yeah. Slightly. I need to start first part. To be honest, made to be honest Owen, we've not done the whole work. Well, it's yeah, yeah. going to gonna help you because George is hitting one point instead of two. Yeah. Um, so we're going to move on to the next five star Suki rated movie, which is David Fincher's Seven. Um, so, oh. Owen. These are good films. You pick this one first. first. <laughs> uh, seven, is it higher or lower than American Psycho on 64? It's higher, but it's not high for me. It's a lot lower for me. Do you me. not like Seven? No, I hate it. Oh, this so, is news. Just no, what... he doesn't hate... Sorry. Yes. No, it's... speak, please. No, speak speak yeah, go, go for it, go for it. <laughs> he doesn't hate it. So the thing about Owen is, if a film makes him feel uncomfortable, it means it's a bad film for him. Whereas I look at Seven as in, holy shit, that film made me feel so uncomfortable because yeah, yeah. that's what it was meant to do. It's a five-star film. So Owen has watched this film and specifically the Sin part of the seven yeah. deadly sins and the knife the knife rape, the rape situation scene. there's not actually a scene you don't see it no, you don't see you it. see the weapon the you apparatus. see the weapon anyway yeah. that made Owen so uncomfortable which I mean that's clearly a very good thing but it that makes it a bad film for him because no, it made him feel so doesn't. bad I feel like it, it, surely that means you... it's effective in what it's doing it's, it's having yeah. that impact on you yeah. that you feel uncomfortable I'll get that but oh, then... there's a five star film that I 
bet you haven't picked, but I really wish we could talk about it. Is it Rosemary's Baby? No. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, I just... I can watch films with graphic horror and graphic violence, and I'll come out of them like, wow, that was a good film, but I just... With Seven, it didn't feel earned. <laughs> didn't feel earned? It just How? felt like a shock. What you say? like shock. It's not Saw. It didn't... It didn't. Oh, my God, you did not just compare Seven to Saw. I mean, the first one is a brilliant film. Yeah. The the rest of them are, like, they're just, good in their own little like way. I didn't feel like any of it was earned. <laughs> I don't feel like the plot's very cohesive. I think you are talking absolutely Yeah, yeah, I am. Absolutely... I'm so glad you said I that. Mean, that was really cool. I was really like, just were you... Were you... <laughs> Had you been smoking the devil's lettuce? Obviously, that was the period of okay, life. Okay, so, I did was so like potentially you need to watch it again. I don't yeah. feel like the cinematography's very good either. Oh, oh so All the performances. Are you joking? <laughs> the cinematography's <laughs> what the fuck incredible. Is wrong with you? In seven. Is it David Fincher? It's David Fincher. No. I like David Fincher. So you need to watch it again. Let's watch it again. No, I'm not Let's watching watch it again. I don't together. like it. Watch it you you should again. definitely watch it again. I'm not sitting through that again. No, no watch it again. Now you're on the podcast ever again. As well. Like, Owen had paranoid weed brain and he couldn't watch it. <laughs> I know it's like, I know people love it and people hold it up very well, but it's just one of them films for me. I just didn't, I just didn't gel with it. I watched it and just really didn't enjoy it. It made me feel really uncomfortable. The thing is, yeah. films make me feel uncomfortable. American Psycho makes me feel uncomfortable, but I enjoy yeah. it. I enjoy the film. Mm. Seven for me just it just made me feel dirty. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't finish it and feel like oh that was re- that was really good. I feel like seven was just like disturbingly shocking and not in like a whoa like that's crazy. What do you mean whoa? When he opens the box and he's going what's in the box? And you weren't going like oh, whoa. <laughs> that I, that is what? honestly one like, of the greatest cinema scenes. There's oh not one God. of all time. There's not one Kevin Spacey film that I like. American you don't like Baby Driver. I've not seen it, but I, I don't like... American um, Beauty? Yeah, American Beauty. Come on. No, oh, I don't like that either. Is that the one with the rose petals? Yeah. yeah you don't no, like don't that like. film? I don't like Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I don't like Kevin Spacey. No one likes Kevin Spacey. No, no one likes Kevin Spacey anymore, yeah. When all the allegations came out about him, I, in my mind, I was like, I always knew there was something really off about him. He's too creepy to, you be, are, to be like... You are the non-sex, but... <laughs> 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 so seven. So seven, yeah. So... Well, I prefer lucky, lucky number seleven. So you okay? Right, we'll, we'll move on then. So you don't. Have you you seen don't that? Yeah, I have seen that. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't rate seven highly, but do you think that it is rated yeah. higher than American Psycho? Critics love shit films, so I'm going to say eighty-four. It's higher. You go eight. Okay. High. Yeah, yeah, it's higher because critics love this shit. They just lap it up. That, it's sorry. It's not shit. Oh, it's so shocking. It's a big twist. Oh, M. Night Shyamalan did the Sixth Sense, and now everyone has to have a twist. I mean, Seven was before yeah, any was kind of Night Shyamalan yeah. movie. <laughs> no, Six Sense came up before Seven. No, no, Six Sense is like 98, 99. When did Seven come up? Like 95. Okay, well, edit that out, George. Or... No, <laughs> that's no, staying in the podcast. not edit that out. Make it look like a fucking idiot. Yeah. <laughs> I can't come in here and slander my five-star films and then make false allegations about I think that's perfect time twists. to move on from Owen. Let's go straight to Zuki. I mean, uh, I let's... don't feel like I have anything more to say about the film itself. I've clearly said it's a fucking masterpiece because it is. Yeah, fuck you, Owen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Stop turning but, my girlfriend against me. <laughs> Eighty four is such a high rating. I just I wasn't prepared. I'm so unprepared for this. You haven't listened to previous episodes. I'm so unprepared for this. Okay. Whenever I hate a film, critics love it. See, this is yeah. this is the beauty of I like to think this is the beauty of our podcast because the boys don't ever know. Uh, what the films are going to be. And so, I don't so very even much know how snap... the podcast works. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a snap judgment of what you think. You can't look it up. You yeah. can't think too much. It's it's a straight edge, like, give me your answers. Okay. okay. Unless you're Owen, you chat about every other movie. That's not the movie that we're talking about. <laughs> sometimes a TV show. <laughs> so, sometimes a TV show, yeah. So you're telling me, just a little bit of context for myself. So you said the highest rated film we you ever rated. No, I'd say it was Saving Pro Rotten. And Rod. the lowest? Uh, the low. We've had a very low movie. The teens. It was like... Oh, in the teens. Okay, yeah. so that's like just the full spectrum. That doesn't help at all. Um... <laughs> And I gave, I thought America's Like well, I was a 76 because I was really hoping that it would be. Um, you only have to go off of what it's Yeah, no, I know, like. but I'm trying to like don't do just... <laughs> yeah, don't do an Owen, please. Don't think it, go with what you feel. I don't know what I feel because I came in here like, well, I did confidently say I wanted to topple George, but I probably wouldn't. So at least I confidently said oh, that. Oh, Zuki, come on, I brought you on here just to beat 
Jaws oh, it's not happening. I'm not yeah, having this day. Better people have tried. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to keep coming back as an almost semi, semi-permanent semi member. We'll just have to go through my whole letter box. Box. To be fair, <laughs> we could just replace Owen with Zuki. <laughs> that should be much better, to be honest. Bit of diversity <laughs> on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, only a tiny bit. Only I mean, yeah. a tiny bit. Yeah, it yeah. is a total boy. Yeah, we're all yeah. very, very white people. Yeah. <laughs> you did the intro and the outro. I mean, that's the conclusion. Yeah. Okay, I'm going, I'm going solid 80. 80. Okay, Ooh. so you've gone lower than um, you've gone lower than Owen, but yeah. you've gone higher the for for your guess. Yeah. Uh, let's go over to George. I feel like he hasn't said too much about uh, seven so far. Oh, I've just been enjoying the <laughs> the, <laughs> the lovers' quarrel. The family <laughs> dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I think it's phenomenal. I don't know. Again, I don't know what Owen's. Uh, I don't know what it's on about. But it's, it's one, it is one of those tricky ones that you don't know quite how critics are going to receive it. In terms of David Fincher films. Is how what, how far into this is his career? second movie? What was his first film? Alien Three. Oh, the one that he says, which he basically film. said, yeah, he, he was like, <laughs> my first film is that. The, the, yeah, the, yeah. The studio <laughs> took over. Um, so if you think from yeah, if you say if you don't count the this, third is, this is his movie, like first notable. This is his first notable right. film. Yeah, and it's a massive success as well. Okay, massive success. Thank you. Well, like, <laughs> yeah, box office. Suicide box office, Squad yeah. massive, massive success in terms of box office, but it yeah. wasn't critically true, 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 true. Uh, acclaimed. So, um, I'm going to say it's definitely higher than sixty-four. Four. Yeah, yeah, so definitely higher than sixty-four. Uh, Zuki, did you say eighty? I did. I think it might be higher than eighty. I mean, the temptation to go eighty-one is is massive, but on, ge- <laughs> on gentlemen's agreement, uh, we will not do that anymore. Uh, so I will go to 83. So you're going to 83. You're going to 82. 82. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you said you wouldn't do that, but I'm 84, so. Yeah, but he's not doing it. Oh, wait, you're 84? Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I didn't even listen to you. people, surely that's harder. Because yeah. you don't. It should be based off the last person's. Okay, okay. For yeah. this time. Thanks, Zuki. Okay, <laughs> so you, you're all correct with it being higher. Um, you've all gone quite high. Mm. Uh, it's only one above America Psych on 65. So oh, Suzuki is the closest. Right. By default. Uh, Zuki's the closest, so she gets yeah. two points. George and I both get. Sixty-five is a robbery, but I'll take it. And Owen and George both get one point for being above. So we we'll do a quick recap on the scores. George and Zuki tied at the top with two points, and Owen just tied on one. Okay, so we're going to go on to the third movie on the list, and this is actually. So I don't know if you, if people who don't know how Letterbox works, you can put your top four favourite movies on your Ooh. profile and this is one of them that is in my top four movies. You're in your top four. Uh, it's uh, in both of your top fours. Oh, it's in my, it's in my no, top four. I mine. think it might be in Zuki. Oh, Zuki well. has it as a five star though. Yeah. Is, is yeah, it's it all five oh. star by Zuki. Um, it is Ari Aster's debut movie. It is my top four. Hereditary. Yes. Um, so we'll go straight... It's my top four, sorry, and uh, Tony Collette is my profile picture on level. Yeah. Oh, that is very <laughs> true, yeah. Because she's an icon. She is an icon. Um, so we'll go straight to Owen, Hereditary. Uh, have you... I feel like you, maybe you haven't watched. I haven't seen it. I've seen Midsummer. Okay, uh, did you watch Bo is Afraid as well? I no. want to see Bo is Afraid. Zuki went to see it with her mum. Yeah. Um, I told Owen that I feel like after we've watched Rosemary's Baby, I know he doesn't like sort of paranormally type horror. I know that's not your thing. But I do feel like now that we've watched Rosemary's Baby and you've really enjoyed it, that you will enjoy Hereditary for the vibes. The Even film. though you know how it, like, I know the plot. I've it, seen most of the I think you'll scenes. enjoy the vibes of the whole thing. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of the key scenes and a lot of the plot just from memes and online and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Zuki's also told me parts of the plot and stuff. But I think I'd enjoy it. I didn't enjoy Midsummer so much. I did like Midsummer, but I thought it was a bit too long. I thought it was half an hour too long. Uh, I think that's the. I think that's what works really well with Hereditary is that it's a lot shorter than Midsummer. And I really like Midsummer, but I, I don't think it's anywhere near. No, it's not anywhere near. It's as, Midsummer as, Florence Pugh. Yeah, yeah, it's nowhere near as good. I as always thought Midsummer Hereditary. came first. No, no Hereditary, no Midsummer. Oh, okay. Midsummer was twenty nineteen. Potentially, that must be like the best. Debut film for a director. Yeah, uh, Rose Reddish. I mean, I think it's definitely mm. up there in terms of like establishing yourself on the big screen with a film like that. Yeah. Oh, what I do want to see, Bo is Afraid. I haven't seen Hereditary. Would you like to watch Hereditary? I feel like I would enjoy it, but I'm not in a rush to see it. There's other films that I'd like to see first. Are you going to give me? You're going to give me. Oh, so I can talk about okay, so you think, okay, so do you think it's higher or lower than seven or sixty-five? Higher. You think it's higher? Okay, what are you going to go for? 73. 73. Okay, let's move on to Suzuki. To me. Right, so yeah, this is in one, this is my top four, one of my top four films of all time. Um, 
I just think it's a masterpiece, especially for horror, which there's cheesy, like, Annabelle-type horror, which I still enjoy. Like, I watched, I think I watched Anne of the First Annabelle in the cinema, and I really, really enjoyed that. And I like, like, classic horror, like Rose's Baby and The Shining. But for modern horror, that is on the same level, and I'm going to say it, on the same level as The Shining for me, Hereditary is just peak cinema. And, I mean, I love Tony Collette, so that probably helps. But just everything about it, I saw it in the cinema, then I watched it with my mum for the second time, and it scared me more the second time I watched it. Absolutely just, like, goosebump worthy film. It's just... You it's love so it. Good. You've always gone about it. Oh yeah, my god, I, I, I love Tony I, Collette. As it's well. such <laughs> like it's one of those. It's a proper wet dream film for me. Like everything <laughs> about it is perfect. And you are an Ari Aster stan as well. Though. I am you now. See all of those yeah. films are premiere like on the within the first couple of days. Yeah. I, well, I mean, none of them. Neither of them. I say none of them. Neither of them have been anywhere near as good, really, for me as yeah. Hereditary. But. Have Aster's you seen the Johnson film that Ari Aster did, the short film? <laughs> no, I, no, I do need to do you know, watch it. Are you aware of it? I'm aware of his shorts. You should watch that. That is fucking disturbing. But sorry yeah. to, to interject. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> At least that was more... Yeah, that, 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 that actually was like connected that. in some yeah. way. I've, I've, I've actually, seen that. I've never even heard of that. It's very short, so. but it's... Honestly, I've not watched that. Yeah. It was his first ever uh, I've seen it on film, his on his letterbox, because I always yeah. check it to see what he's coming out with. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just impeccable. And I think, and I feel like, and as I said, I didn't, I don't really know what, how people felt about films when they came out. I know it's very polarising in terms of the audiences. I know some people just think, what a waste of time, which to me is just, that hurts my feelings. Um, But I feel like critically, it came out and it was really well received because Midsummer, I think, was reasonably well received and then Bo's Afraid has been not very well received. So I, I feel like it's high. I do feel like it's really high. I don't know why. I'm going to go so higher. Are you going to go higher than 65? Yep. Much higher than 65. I'm going to go for a solid... Oh, I'm going to really push the boat out. What did you say was your highest? I'm not going oh, in the 90s. 98 is our highest. Oh, I'm going to be as so bad far. as his. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going Can 80. Say, before you give your score, yeah. you're going to come out of this podcast hating the critics as much as I do. <laughs> <laughs> I fully agree with that. I already hate them for what they gave American Psycho. And for seven. And seven. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I know, we talked about how shocking they don't know. I know. Um, but but, you're, I, you're but I feel like because 80s? it's in my recentish memory, I'm going 87. 87. That is high. That is quite high. Okay. So, Orion's gone up 73, Zuki's gone up 87. George, really showing that you don't listen. Now, now George, you recently watched yes. Hereditary for the first I, time. I I knew this film was going to come up in the Zuki episode, regardless... <laughs> because it's like... Each yeah, one exactly. Of <laughs> regardless of what the topic was, I was like, it's definitely coming up. So, I watched it in preparation um, the day before coming down to see everybody. I, I would admit I probably didn't see it in the best of vibes because it was the middle of the day. <laughs> um, but I really liked it. Uh, I didn't give it five stars. You gave it four, you gave four and a half. I gave it four and a half because there were just a, just like minor little things that I was a bit like, yeah. Like the dad's performance in it. I don't know who the actor is. was awful. Like everybody else was so spotless. That's a weird way to describe that it for that, for that film. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, they're all excellent. They were all yeah, such yeah. amazing performances for everybody. And then the dad was just, just didn't do it well at all. And I mean, it's Gas Gabriel uh, Burton. I, I, he's a I really do, I do famous not, Irish do actor. Um, he's in Usual Suspects. Haven't seen it. Boo. Uh, End of Days, Miller's Crossing. I haven't seen any of this. He's in loads of stuff. He's a really, really famous actor. But, but just... I, I would, I would maybe disagree to say that he's not great. I would say that he is overshadowed. Mm, okay, so it doesn't necessarily mean that he is that's, bad. That's the thing. Like Tony Collette's performance in oh. it is like it's and insane. I, yeah, I said this to Ian when we were talking about it before that. There are... I, I've got goosebumps thinking about yeah, it. There are, there... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've literally got goosebumps thinking about Tony Collette in that film. Hairs on edge. Yeah. <laughs> you should watch Miriam's Wedding. But there, there are moments where <laughs> <laughs> there are moments where like. It looks like her entire physicality changes, like when oh. she's screaming, and like it's it's just so impressive. Like Mia Farrow and Rosemary's Baby. When she stands up, what does she say at the table? She's like, "I am your mother." Yeah. yeah. Oh, that yeah. So that whole scene is is like 
I've seen that in compilations of like best acting. Like, yeah. how spoilery is, do we get on this podcast? You can be pretty, no, no, no. Sorry, I'd say for a film that came out in 2017. Yeah. 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 Okay. So or 2018. When she. 2018. When she sets fire to. Um, no, sorry, she doesn't set fire. Yeah, she does. She does in her dream sequence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She sets fire yeah. to her son, and the way her face changes yeah. in that. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, she should it, have gone Oscar. That. Yeah, it, it's. It's. I think it's one of those once in a lifetime performances, yes. which I think is talked about a lot between fans of the film, yeah. but wasn't quite recognised on the level that it should have been. But then again, well, I think we've talked about before that like horror movies just generally don't get recognised from like the big, no. the big like awards kind of ceremonies yeah. and stuff like that. No, uh, but it's it's shocking how some that like, could be ignored. Yeah. But I think for me, Tony Clark, that's one of my one of my top all time performances ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's flawless. It's, yeah. it's insane how, because like, you watch her in interviews and she's like such a nice person. So you think, how could she channel? And I've seen her in so many like different things like Muriel's she's Wedding. Australian, right? She's Australian, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, in Muriel's Wedding, she's like so cutesy in that film. And like, I watched that TV show that she was in, which was just average, but I watched it because it was her. And it's like, it's it feels so out what was she in that we watched? for whatever she'd done. And then she just pulled off the best performance of... The century. <laughs> we watched a well-known film and you didn't know she was in it and then you watched it and you was like, oh my God. Tony Collette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd seen it before but you hadn't picked up on the fact picked it was up. her. I don't remember. Ah, well, it will come up. In yeah, like it will come up. Minutes. Minutes. So George, yeah. I want to ask, you, you said that you weren't necessarily scared by the movie, which I, I should understand, but yeah, it's more I... of a, an unsettling film. Was there any particular scene that you felt the most unsettled yeah, it's, de- it's definitely not like a, f- it's not a scary film. Like I didn't go away like, oh, I'm not going to be able to sleep because it's very, I think films like that, they're very self-contained, like the Babadook. You're not necessarily scared of it because if you're not going through the same thing that the characters are going through, you're safe almost. Yeah. It's yeah. a very like contained within the family. But the, I think the most unsettling scene was towards the end uh, when Peter's in bed and he wakes up and there's uh, what well, what you find out to be Tony Collette in the corner and you can just oh, see like sorry. the start of the leg and the arm and it pans out and it's just and like when you're when you realize that it's someone it's just Zuki's got <laughs> yeah, like like that that realization because there are other bits like what's really clever about it is there's lots of a spoiler well pretty much <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's loads of foreshadowing like uh, uh, there's like a hoodie on a chair and he thinks it's Charlie at one point and there's loads of bits where you're like, oh, is that someone? Could it, like, you're looking in the background a lot. And then for that bit, the, re- the just that realisation is just... And the silent leaving of the room oh, after that is oh. just so, so I, So this chilling. is the thing. So when I first watched it, it, it fully freaked me out. I went to sleep in the cinema with my dad, I believe. And it was one of those films that you come out of and obviously the end happens the way it happens. And... The lights came up, and it was one of those films that everyone was just completely dead silent. Silent, yeah. Just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what the fuck has just happened? Like, on the light ups. It, yeah, it was just one of those films, just like, oh my god, I don't even know what, what to say. So then I then watched it with my mum the second time, and I picked up on things I hadn't picked up on the first time that I'd watched, mm. so a lot of the foreshadowing. Because when I watch films, I don't, I'm not good at predicting ends and predicting twists yeah. and predicting mm. things, like, unless it's a very obvious storyline like a lot of horrors are like smile or something like that you can kind of predict it but that one i just i was i was just so into the story i didn't really get it so when i watched it for the second time and i started picking up on the, all the like little symbols that were placed yeah. around that yeah. i hadn't picked up on the first you time you like subtle horror though. you it don't just like, like it, popcorn horror. it like almost brought like out a claustrophobic fear in me that i didn't realize that was going to happen because i'd already seen it i thought well i'm not gonna yeah, get scared yeah. by it and then the second time i was like oh my god Terrified. Yeah. I, I, so I, I mean, I saw it in the cinema as well. I went to, um, I went, I went to screen with two friends of mine, and one of them is like a horror expert. Like he has watched probably every single horror movie in existence, even like the underground stuff. Mm. And it's so like he's just so like he, I, I, nothing affects him at all. And we watched that, like you said, so he, like you could hear a pin drop in the cinema after we walked out in silence for about a good five minutes. So we got outside, we went. What the fuck was that? And then Rob, the guy who I saw it with, the horror expert guy, he was just like, "That was one of the most terrifying films I've ever watched in my life." And 
for someone who's watched almost like every horror movie is so conditioned to it to be yeah, to, so yeah. affected well, this by is it. the thing i'm so conditioned now to horror i am good at getting myself spooked up yeah i'm very good at that when it's a jumpy film i'm good at getting myself into the like jump scares and all the rest of it but yeah, something about Hereditary just gets in. It worms its way into it. Yeah. We've clearly been talking about Hereditary for too long because Owen's just got his phone out. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go, let, let's, let's go to George. So George, obviously, you enjoyed it. Not quite a five-star movie for you. Yeah, there was a little bit. Near perfect, not near quite perfect. perfect. What are you going to go um, rating-wise? I think it is higher than seven. No, wait, was seven the last one? Seven was the last one, yeah, 65. Yeah. Yep. Higher so than seven. Higher. Yep. I think it's higher than what Owen said. I but don't. Th- I don't think this is high as what Zuki has said. So 87, 87 for a horror film seems preposterous. <laughs> I agree with that. Um, so I am gonna sort of split the difference, but a bit lower. Uh, I'm gonna go down to seventy nine. What did you say? I can't remember. I feel like you go last. You said this time is working in your favour a lot. Though. I mean, it's supposed to work in your favour. Yeah, like, it's right. supposed to work in the favour of well, the person I'm, who's losing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say we're, we're in the third round and someone's got a spawn here. Um, so it? You're all right with it being higher. Uh, Zuki has got the spot on oh, with what? 87. No way! Oh, she spawn. knows that off by heart because she looks at it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe unconsciously in my brain. Subconsciously. Subconsciously. In my so brain. Zuki gets to the three so points. This is the thing, what you just said. There, oh, George, you're getting smashed already. too high of a horror <laughs> for a horror. That's why I think Egg on I your knew face. that it was so <laughs> well received, just because it was, it was a horror film, and I was like, Holy shit, I've never seen a horror film so yeah. well received. I must go see this immediately. Yeah. I feel like that's so, that's in my brain. That's but incredible. I nearly said 86. I'm so bad at 87. <laughs> so Zuki got three points. You're on five points now in the lead. George and Owen are on three points each. Um, I mean, it goes all down. No, wait, sorry, that's wrong. Wait, Owen's, no. on, Owen's on two, yeah. George is on three. Uh, <laughs> do not put me in the same Let's, camp as this It all goes down here. Let's <laughs> move on to the halfway point. Um, so the next five-star Zuki Rage movie on Letterbox is, again, one of my, one of my all-time favorites. Not in my top four, but it could be. It's very interchangeable. Jay Gyllenhaal's Day Darko. Jay Gyllenhaal's hot. You say Jay Gyllenhaal's Donnie Darko like he directed. <laughs> oh, he 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 started it, wrote the theme tune, some sort of tune. Maggie Gyllenhaal's in it as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's sister. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so that young Seth Rogen. Oh uh, yeah, of course. He's is, a school bully. Is in the, oh, yes, is like a school bully yeah. in the classroom. Yeah. And um, um, Drew Patrick, Patrick Swayze. Swayze. Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Oh my god, it's got a stealth. Um, yeah. I always, always really forget thought. about the, the twist with Patrick Swayze's character. Well, that's a guy. That's a pedophile. He's a nonce, yeah. Um, always forget that. All right, guys, spoilers. Nah, well, we're still talking in the year 2000. Yeah, it's an old film. Not talking about spoilers. Yeah. Um, but Owen, right, let's go straight to you, Donnie Darko. Sometimes I doubt your commitment to Sparkle Motion. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's really good. Yeah. I love her. She's a bitch, though, isn't she? She's thing. a bitch. Yeah. I love Donnie Darko. <laughs> Leaves me free, then. No, it's a oh. <laughs> oh, wait, you just, love Donnie Darko. You can say leaves me creaming. Come on. Yeah. Sure. Oh, well, that's my... We have said that's my review. Much worse, and it's still... Oh, we definitely have said much worse. Okay, well, leave that in then. That's more of you. Um, what was the Five previous stars. score? Uh, oh, so the previous score is 87. With oh, her better it's lower than 87. So you're, you're going to go lower. You go straight into the score. I think it's along the lines of American Psycho, where it's got a cult following. It's a beloved film, but critically, it didn't do brilliant. I'm going to go like 62. You're going to go 62 with Donnie Darko. That is harsh. I would have it like in the 90s. I love Donnie Darko. You know I do. I've got the mask and everything. I would wear it, but it makes me really hot because of my beard. <laughs> I, <laughs> you did a video. I wore it for an Instagram reel for my ha- uh, for my October like wrap up. Mabel hates that it. I've read, and it was so hot. I got so angry. Like <laughs> filming this literally like twenty second reel. You can understand so, why Frank is the way he is in the movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's so yeah. fucking hot under the costume. So warm and sweaty under there. <laughs> um, Mabel hates it when I put it on and chase her. So we're going to talk about Mabel, just to let people know Mabel's your dog. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's, yeah. she's, she's, she's not, she's not an additional right guest. Yeah. She's just here chilling. She's yeah. being a very good girl. She is being a good girl. So you've moved on 62. All right, let's move on to Zuki. Yeah. Uh, so another five-star movie I'll see for you. It is. It's one of those films I haven't seen for a really, really long time. So it's kind of like a very legacy five-star rating for me. I'm sure yeah. it still would be. I saw it a lot when I was younger. Um, I watched it like repetitively, but I haven't probably well, seen it. Kind of film. 
Oh no, I did. I watched it repetitively, really? and then what well, my twenty almost twenty seven now. So I probably haven't seen it in just under a decade. Like genuinely, wow, okay. I haven't watched it in a really really long time. I do get though why that is because I I would say it's one of those movies which I love is five star for me as well. But it's one of those ones where maybe I don't watch it every year. Is that one where I go, watch every cut? Oh, tell you what, I haven't watched Donnie Dark in a while. Yeah. Let's put I feel on, like, like I definitely need to watch it again yeah, soon, and yeah. it will still be a five star one hundred percent. And I feel like when I first watched it, it was one of those films that I then was like, right, I need to know every single thing about this film. I need to look up everything about it, what the director said. It's one yeah. of them. So Owen's score of 62, I have a feeling from memory when it came out, it was actually really, even though it's now a cult, I do feel like it's a cult film. It's definitely a cult yeah, film. I feel like it was really well received when it came out. Mm. I don't know what it is, but this is just from memory from being about 16 years old. Would you class it as sci-fi? It's definitely, it has elements of sci-fi, sci-fi to it, because it, it, it kind of, it, it deals with like time travel. Speculative. Speculative. Speculative time travel, yeah. I haven't actually seen it. So I, this, I, I, I you haven't oh, seen it? Oh yeah. well, my gosh. Okay, what I would say it is, is quite long. I don't know if Zuki and Aaron have seen this version, but I, I think last year, year before... I bought a special edition version of Dai Darko, um, and it's the director's cut, Richard Kelly's director's cut, Mm -hmm. um, so it's obviously longer, and there's so much more in there that kind of covers the time travel aspect of the movie, and that was was kind of true vision for the movie, Um, because Richard Kelly, since Dai Darko came out, what, 23 years ago, hasn't really made a lot, and was kind of... In a sense, Blacklist is from Hollywood. Really? What, for Donnie Darko? Not for Donnie Darko. I think it's just more like... I think I think because his experience on Donnie Darko, he still isn't very happy with like, the theatrical release of it. Mm. So what people did see, he wasn't happy with how that turned out to be. And I think he came a bit disenfranchised with Donnie Darko. Basically, classic studio interference where they didn't want to confuse the viewer, so they just made it as basic as possible. But they made it... Confusing. I feel like it's more confusing. But they when I finished thought, the film, I was yeah. like, right, I need to now Google absolutely everything that this film is about because I have absolutely no idea. It's more the timeline, other than the fact that it's genius. Yeah, I, I would say it's like I. I think when I watched the director's cut, it did like open up a bit more for me. I was like, wow, okay, like the bits that they kind of pass by a little bit in the theatrical version are touched upon quite a lot more. But then I do think there is a flip side of like, is it too much? And some people don't like the director's cut um, because it's a bit, too, it's a bit too long, and they, t- they I kind of cost you out bits. But I, I say I would. It, it definitely feels like how long watch? I think it's like two hours twenty, maybe. Mm. It's not uh, the film up two hours and a half though. Uh, no, I think it's a bit shorter than that. Oh. Uh, but I think the director's cut is, is a bit longer. Um, but the, the two films he did after that bombed. Oh really? Yeah, big time. So. Did that, he write it? Yeah, yeah, he's uh, yeah, original. original so he's got a good cast so and a good budget. I feel like you've gone way too low. I just feel like I remember it being really well received, even though audiences, again, were like not sure necessarily what they watched, and then it's become like a cult film. So I'm actually going to go higher. Okay. I want to say, though, there's a big jump between IMDb and Metacritic. No, I know very that. Similar no, I know that, because sometimes I watch an IMDb film that's got like a 9, and the Met score's a 36, and it's yeah. just doesn't make any <laughs> yeah, sense. No. So, I always um, get so thrown off when I see shit like that. And also the opposite way around, where like the audience have given it a 4, and it's got like a 92 or something. Yeah. <laughs> I do think that it's... Higher. Higher than but we're on 87, okay. The higher than 87? What are you going to go with, Suki? 89. Yeah, I'm being higher. I, I think it was really well received. Okay. I can right, George, you've obviously you've said that you haven't watched yeah, Donnie Darko. I have not. Definitely one to add to your list, I'll 100%. To be fair, it, it's, it's always been on my list. And I remember the we had the, I, want, I assume it was on VHS. Oh, yeah. And not DVD. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember like having it at my dad's house and being like, "That looks creepy. I'm never going to watch that." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so just gave it like a wide berth when I was younger. And then when everybody's like, "Oh, no, it's really good," I was like, for a long time of of my life, I've been like, "Ah, it's it's an old film. I'm not going to watch it." Two thousand one is it? Two thousand two thousand one. It's I, I say it came out when I was eight. I get that because <laughs> so, I had that with the Chronicles of Riddick. 
<laughs> really comparable film. No, whenever I'm sure. looking at the cover, I'd be like, "That looks scary." <laughs> yeah, right there we go. Yeah. Um, I'd say it's not scary. It's it's like gothic. Yeah, I, it's I like think gothic as, vibes. As I've got it. older, I've I've realised it's not a horror film. Yeah, like, yeah. by any stretch of imagination. So I really should go back to watch it. But there are so many films on my on my list of things I really should have seen. That I'm realistically, I'm never getting through. But Dolly Duck should now be the top. All right. Yeah. <laughs> for you, Zuki, you, you, you may have written to watch Red Hat Tree, then now you need to watch Dolly Duck. And you need to watch Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. And Rosemary's Baby. I, I, th- I think I've got to believe, I'm going to follow the same logic that I had before, where cult films get a cult following after not being received super well by critics and in not having the spotlight twice. So I'm going to say, and, and the fact that there is like a director's cut would potentially and if the director themselves is not very happy with it it kind of leans towards the fact that maybe critics wouldn't have been super happy with it as well okay so i think zuki's gone the wrong way i think she's blinded by her personal <laughs> <laughs> opinion i mean maybe yeah. um remind me what i mean what, however i, I would say her victory was better than Donald Duck. i went with 62 62 so we've got 62 and 89 currently. Low. 62 seems really low. I'm going to do the same thing, go in the middle, but I'm going to go closer to... Uh, I'm going to say it's lower than Hereditary. Lower, lower than yeah. Hereditary. Yeah. And I'm going to go to 60... 60 is so mean. I know. I'm going to go 66. Oh, I feel like it was... I, I have such weird memories about it being well received. Okay. Hearing about the director, talking about it, saying mm. he didn't like how it had turned out for him. Yep. But it worked out really well, just in general. That's I mean, my memory. I think, yeah, that's, I think that's the weird thing is, is that where someone who isn't very happy with how their own kind of like piece of work has turned out, but everyone loves it nevertheless. Yeah. Like, it's... like The Shining and Stephen King was oh, like, that's so terrible. Oh, Stephen King, man. And he made his own worst version. <laughs> yeah, I know. Although I'll apparently ne- it's I'll pretty scary. Watch. No, it's not the top of the Kubrick version. I've heard it's... Oh, really? Yeah, weird people like it. You know, people who have clearly no taste. I think you would love it. Um, <laughs> but okay, um, George, Owen, you're wrong. Oh. Uh, Zuki, you are right for it being higher. I can uh, you're, one, you're, you're one off though. It's, like oh. eight, it's on 88. Oh my god. Uh, 88. Eight, so oh, Zuki, it's a one above hereditary. It's a one above. Uh, so you got the two points of being the closest. Mark and hell. George, We're terrible zero experiment. points. So, so wait, Zuki, back. That's a... twice in a row you've gone one above. Look, Damn. Look, I was about to say, I don't make the rules, but literally I did make the rules. Yeah. <laughs> I literally thought okay, this so the how I want. Okay, so the next one's going to be an 89. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So recap, Zuki's on seven. From Fuck. seven at halfway point, George on three points, Owen on two. Right, so there we have it for the first part of our very special 10th episode. Zuki has a commanding lead, but can she keep it throughout the next four films? Tune in next time to find out. Make sure to check out Zuki on all her socials at Zuki the Book Bum if you're one of our fans. And make sure to follow us on ours at The Rating Is Right if you're one of hers. Thanks for listening. We hope to hear from you soon. It's the rating. It's the rating. Rating, rating. It's the rating. It's the rating. It's the rating. The Rating is Right podcast is hosted by Ian Crow and co-hosted by George Robinson and Owen Cox. The show is edited by George Robinson with music by Will Butler. You can find the podcast on Instagram under the handle The Rating is Right or you can contact the hosts on their email address theratingisright at gmail.com if you have any suggestions or want to discuss your thoughts on previous episodes. Thanks for listening.